Let's start talking about accumulators, pressure points, and go th we're going to take them through all three hinges. Okay. So um, just pick one for me. A horizontal hinging, the full roll, then that produces a closing only motion of the club face. And that's okay. important because that's the purest compression. There's no tilting no of the back. club face, no laying back of the no club. Lay back. That's That's an important point here. So none that, of yeah, you that. Got, yeah, here you go. You talk to that camera, I'll talk to this one. <laughs> You know, me, uh, my people talk to your people. Yeah, that's okay? exactly right. Here we go. That club face closes only through impact. Right. So closes only. Full. It does not tilt under this ball at all. Closing only, that, closing with layback and layback only. Correct. That's it. Now, what hinge do you want me? To, what, how do you want me to move this? Uh, what accumulators of power do you want me to move? Well, well let's just do let's just do left arm swing. Okay. Left Which arm you, swing with and, a that, and you can hinge. and you can motivate that with a little body pivot yeah. because properly the left arm swing is a is a body transfer of momentum into the inert left arm and club. So a little bit of pivot to help you through. So here it is. It is it is a turn and a turn with a sensation of a roll in the hands. Right. The turn feel determines the roll feel. So you can see the toe of that club going right down the line. Go to, go to your backstroke. The roll, the turn feel, turns to the right, rolls to the left. The turn feel, his left wrist is vertical to the ground. Let's, let's see it. Let's see? That's vertical to the ground, just like a door swung open. Then he went through the shaft rotated around the sweet spot, and once again, just like a closing door. Really, all he did was this, which is on the horizontal plane looks like that, plane. is down here pointing at a baseline that looks right. like that. And because I'm because I'm on that inclined plane, that's the reason I must feel that full roll. Now again, the horizontal motion, the full roll feel, those go together. The horizontal, the closing only club face, and the full roll feel go together because I'm swinging this golf club down the incline plane. My left arm is not horizontal on the ground. Right. If I were playing golf up here, I wouldn't have to feel that. It'd always close on. Right. right now, get, let's go. Uh, get that club in a ball in a bush. You might have to use that, but <laughs> most of the time it's going to be down here on the ground. <laughs> let's use uh, that accumulator again. Accumulator with an angled hinge. Right. That, now you got the face halfway across the line, right. angled halfway across the line. Absolutely. And those balls behaved it. They did. Why? Why? Well, because of the club face. What did it do differently than in the first? The club one? face did not. It laid back as it closed, so the ball went. Ah! Wow! Went higher. So there was some wobble, if you will. The yeah. ball, the, the, the ball motion. slipped a little bit on the club face. And then this would be the final. So here I'm going to use the same thing. It's using this accumulator with a vertical motion. All right. So now I'm going to use number one, and I'm going to use number one with all three hinges. I'm going to do it first. All three with what? All three hinges. Oh, oh, you're going to do three swings for us? Yes, I'm going to do all three. I'm going to start with angled, which because the bending and straightening of the right arm always produces an angled motion. Yep, that's what so it wants. It's always to... going to be an angled. So hinge. drive out tends to produce a club face that stays perpendicular to the uh, inclined plane. Right. So it's the left wrist is staying back. perpendicular to the inclined plane, so the club face stays perpendicular to the inclined that's plane. Exactly right. That is the, and that's produced, that's a natural product of that right elbow straightening and driving against sure. the back of the shaft through the right forearm. Right, so there's that's no, there's the... There's no, ro there's no feel of a full roll that's with correct. that motion. So that's the natural, angle hinging then is the natural byproduct of the hitter's driving right arm. That's exactly right. Now here, here's hitting chipping with a vertical hinge. And that was a deliberate mechanical manipulation because... I had to manipulate because... it. I had to feel lots of this because the right arm again is wanting to create that that angled hinge is driving Did you down hit down. on that one or did you swing? I hit. You hit. So you use an active right arm to hit and you overrode hitting's natural tendency to produce an angled hinge with left by, hand. Did, by physically rotating your left hand backwards. Literally filling a there reverse hole. There you go. Right, now the, the final one. Okay. And, and with this shot, I'm going to bend and straighten my right arm and I'm going to use a full roll. So I'm overriding the tendency for the angled hinge of the straight, bending and straightening of the right arm. So you're still hitting. I'm still hitting but I'm fully rolling left. So that's here. kind of fighting City Hall, isn't it? That's Because it that driving right arm wants to make it go in an angled hinge, and your and left wrist is saying, no, I'm boss here, it, and I'm going to make it into a... It definitely is. Right. So when, it, when we come to like a running chip shot, like a, a real running chip shot, that horizontal motion, that horizontal Closing hinge, only motion. Closing only club face will make that ball scoot along that green. Right. So when you're using that, use some pivot and use a full roll. That'll get that ball scooting out there. Those two work real well together. Now, are you still hitting? No, I swung there. Now, there you go. So, now, so when that's you start using, using momentum transfer, that's using this. So, throw out action wants to wants to close the face only right. and, and produce a horizontal hinge. That's exactly right. So, those two go together really well. Perfectly well together. All right, can now. you now? Can you do a swing with angled hinging? Sure, all day. I just feel nothing. 
So or nothing in terms of the you did your no body roll. rotation, centrifugal force drove the club head, mm -hmm. but your left wrist controlled the club face in an angled hinge motion. That's right, that's exactly right. Great. I feel a no roll. Now when I'm hitting a chip, let's say I want to hit a sort of a hitting. I'm, I'm hitting now. I'm swinging, so I'm using this again. When I when I'm hitting a running chip, use pivot. Use a little full. I mean, if you want to hit that little low running shot, let the pivot do it. Use this accumulator and use that full roll feel. Now if you want to hit a shot that's more uppity, uh -huh. uppity. Right. Meaning, uh, like let's say a shot that I want to get about six feet in the air pretty fast. Well, then you can use this right arm here to bend and straighten, and it'll give you an angled hinge. Mm -hmm. It will give you that hinge that you're looking for. All right, let's go back just for a second to that horizontal hinging and the swinging. Mm -hmm. You showed me you could do all three hinge actions and use an active right arm in hitting. Absolutely. And you showed me for sure. The natural throwout action of centrifugal force right. and swinging produces the horizontal hinging, right. which you demonstrated. Now demonstrate angled hinging and vertical hinging swinging. Swinging. Angled would be here, feeling no roll. Uh huh. And vertical would be here. The reverse the roll. Feeling of a reverse roll, a reverse roll of the hand. But the club head is still being driven by centrifugal force. That makes it a swing. Now Absolutely. there are three basics: horizontal hinging. The left wrist is going to stay vertical to the ground, and the club face is going to close like a door, and you're going to appear to have rolled through the shot. It's the longest travel. Notice the toe of the club going down the line. So that toe is that toe, that leading edge, you're working this way. You had the sensation of a full roll. Right, and my hands have gone to the end of the follow through. The club shaft is 45 degrees to the ground. Now I'm going to go exactly the opposite way, which is in a vertical hinge. It's going to be right. very short and staccato like. Beautiful. So beautiful. So now the leading edge and the toe are sitting horizontal on the ground. You had the feeling of a reverse roll. In your right. Hands. Horizontal to the ground, but vertical to an incline, to vertical to a wall. This way. We've got a backward move in the hand. And then the most natural hand jack that, that produced maximum layback of the club and a soft shot. Yeah. Then the most natural action is the feel of a no roll. Remember, on their own plane, horizontal hinging feels like a no roll. Vertical hinging feels like a no roll. On an incline plane, the horizontal feels like a roll, and the vertical feels like a reverse roll. So this is not well, like a no roll. Uh, in, yeah, just, just on an angle plane, you're already plane. on the angle plane of the stroke, so it feels just like horizontal did on this plane, vertical did on this plane, just the feel of a no roll. So now the face of the golf club will be at a 45, basically to its target line, so pointing over there. You have the feeling of no roll. Correct. Beautiful. So those are three basic shots. Three basic the feel. A full, roll, a, a full roll of the club face is the feel of a roll. Roll feel produces a, a full roll of the club face. A no roll feel produces a half roll of the club face. And a reverse roll feel produces a no roll of the club face. So those are your three basic basics. Now, let's get into some special applications. 